Hey, is Heather there? Hey, Heather, this is R.J. Bates going back to property there on New Jerusalem Road. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Your phone number is coming up as titanium, and I didn't know what that was. And then I got your voicemail the other day, so I didn't answer it. Before. I got you. My company's called Titanium Investments. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. So I guess, so basically, what do you need to know? Uh, well, let's start with the most fun question. How much do you want oh. for it? When you say it's not in good condition, what do you mean by that? Um, the, the, what do you call it? Um, foundation has shifted over the years. Uh-huh. Probably was like that when he bought when we bought it. I don't even know, but as we've noticed it, it's not terrible. But if you stare at a doorway, sometimes they're crooked. Um, other than that, everything is actually fine. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. Um, the floors are not brand new, but everything's functioning. Everything works. We live here daily. <laughs> Everything's been fine. Um, but I did want to, you know, hold yeah. disclosure that it's sinking. <laughs> is, uh, is your mailbox the little wooden one that looks like a little house? Yeah. So you're up that driveway with, like, the brown roof? Yeah. Uh, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, are you looking at it online? Yep. Okay. Thirteen twenty square feet, two bed, one bath. That is correct. It's, the upstairs has like a loft with. There's so much storage in this place. Which is okay. good. All righty. Let's see. Why do you want to sell? Um. Well, honestly, we we the property is gigantic, <laughs> um, and it's a lot of upkeep. Um, but we know that there are a few people that have told us they're interested in building additional you know, buildings on this property. I have no idea. Um, but we're just ready. I mean, we live in Eden, and I work in Williamsville, which is a 40-minute drive every day, so that's kind of tedious. Um, and my uh, fiancé just retired from the military, so we're just kind of looking for, I guess, something a little closer to where I am. He's not working anymore. Gotcha. That's All right. Because we hate the house. <laughs> What's that? It's not because we hate the house. We do love the house. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> and it has all brand new windows, too. Um, and the, the whole entire bathroom has been redone. If that matters. It does. Okay. They're, be- they're beautiful picture windows, actually. So, let's see. How long have you owned it? Um, I don't own it. My fiance does, but he's on take care of this thing. Uh, I think he bought it in 2015. Gotcha. Because there's actual old, old pictures from the the listing, so I can kind of see. They must be, yeah, they must be old. Uh, Are you looking at something specific? Or? It's realtor.com. Okay, hold on. I'm going to look down there, too. Let me kind of see what you're looking at. It's got 18 yeah. pictures. It looks like they were taken with a cell phone from 2008, but... Um, yeah, they're definitely... Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, let me pop on here and see what you're looking at. Well, the good news is, is I can already see the crooked doors and the pantry and the kitchen. Uh-huh. Because you got a big old tiny gap in one corner and a big old gap on another one. So, yeah, it was probably already starting back then. Probably starting. Oh, God, the house looks nothing like this anymore. Okay, <laughs> that porch is not there uh, in the first picture. Um, the garage is still there. Let me see. Uh, yep, there's the property. Okay, oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> the window is completely different. Like the window in the living room is a pop out picture window with um cranks on either side. 
Right. And then, uh, so yeah, that, that's totally different. And then, let me see what else is going on in this picture. Um, Are you on picture eight? Yeah, I'm on, I don't even know. These aren't really numbers. Hang on a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so the, the picture with the dining room table. Yep. Um, is what I'm looking at. And that's, that window is the same. The one after that. Gotcha. Um, is the, the window is completely different. Like the window with the one with the brown or green couch, that window next to it is the day picture window, which I could send you pictures of. Yep. Um, the kitchen is entirely different. <laughs> uh, the floor is still there and the cabinet is painted. Um, the window in the kitchen is completely redone. Um, God, this place looks like crap. Um, the front, okay, so I don't know what picture this is, but there's a room with like, it shows a fireplace. Okay. That's upstairs. So it's not that color. It's, the whole thing is painted blue. And then the, you see that there's two closets. And on the other side, behind where the couch is in the picture, there's a huge closet. Okay. Um, okay, and there's the bedroom, there's downstairs, the downstairs bedroom is huge. Um, it doesn't look like it in the picture, but it is. And then there's the bottom, it shows like a sunroom. Yep. Cause it, yeah, that's completely the same. The, the windows are the same in there. Okay. And the, and the bathroom is completely redone. The bathroom, um, shower is completely, it's beautiful. Probably it's prettier than the rest of the house. So... Gotcha. What about the outside? Has any work been done, like paint or anything like that? I don't think so. Um, hey, babe. I don't know where he went. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think anything has been done. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, the garage um, is fully intact, however. The... Uh, we had really bad hail over the winter and it dented the, whatever those things are. Like the roof? Like the, not the roof, but like the metal the where pit. it touches the water. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I can't think of the, the, the gutters. Yeah, the gutter. Thank you. Gutter. I can think of that word. Yeah. I'm talking to the people who buy houses. It's hilarious. Like you have issues. Like I'm from Texas, and yeah. and you, you just talked about issues that are very common here in Texas and not yeah. common in New York. Yeah, I mean, like every house here has foundation issues, and every house get hit, gets hit with hail all the time. You never hear that when we talk to sellers up north, though. That's, That's so funny. Well, we live in we live in a wooded area. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but you know. It's, yeah. it's more like the foundation is more about like soil. That's why it's um, common here because we have sandy soil. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of strange. Um, okay, so this is, uh, your property is kind of a unicorn. Um, yeah. Because it's got land. Um, So it's not really comparable to a lot of other properties. So give me a second here. Mm -hmm. So you're the price of two twenty five. You were just basing that because that's what Zillow says. Yes. Gotcha. I mean, I sold I sold my last house in twenty twenty. <laughs> Bad time to sell. And um, I mean, we bought it for one eighty nine and we sold it for three thirty three. It was crazy. But then we also redid the kitchen. But yeah. All right, give me a second. I'm uh, I got some comps pulled up here, so I can. found a property that could potentially be comparable to yours. Okay. Oh, 
holy cow. The pictures they put on this property is like, <laughs> I don't even know if this is part of the property or if they just pulled this from like Google images. It's like a, a cheesy uh, winter picture that you would see at like Kirkland's or something. It's like, it's got like a freaking barn with a, a old 1920s looking bicycle leaning across it with snow all over the trees and then a cardinal sitting on the tree branch, like right in the perfect center of it. Like, how is it? It's like, how is this a listing photo? Like, come on, what? That's really funny. Yeah, no houses around here have cardinals sitting on the branches. Yeah, I mean, it's like, and then the next picture is literally a picture of three deer eating. It's like, are you selling your house? I mean, what what is happening right now? Like, I, I don't even believe this is real. <laughs> what's, the, what's the house number? It's nine eight eight one. Nine. Oh, that's way okay. That's way far. It's from us. Okay. Gowanda State Road. Gowanda Street State Road. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I mean, we drive down that every day. But can you go look at the the picture with the cardinal, please? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Just. So, so you can realize, like, oh my, how cheesy this is. It's really funny. All right, let me check on Realer.com. Okay, what was the address again? 9, well, I'm looking on Zillow right now, um, but it's 9881 Gowanda State. Uh huh. Wow, these are stock photos. Thank you. Oh my god, I see it. it looks like a painting. That's what I'm saying. You would buy that at Kirkland's for nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's no way that's actually real. No. No. Well, that's hold on. Thing. No, you do see. No. Then later on, you see the house and you see the barn. It might actually be real. Oh my God. That's the real barn. I mean, maybe it was real. Oh, there's the barn, yeah. I mean, it. yeah, that's... Oh, well, they must have staged it back or something. Right? Like <laughs> uh, I mean, so that one is... So the reason why I'm looking at that one is is because it has 228,000 square feet of land. You have 126. Um, that's the most comparable lot size to you. And it's got a comparable size house, 1,200 square foot. You have 1,300 square feet. So uh, now the, the problem is, is that they have almost double the amount of land. So it's like I went, I went into the, the other direction. So I think that's why they sold for as much as they did. The other thing is they were listed for two seventy five, and then it says they sold for three fifty five. I mean that, that's a that's a lot over asking price. That's how it is around here. It's crazy. Um, Houses go for way over asking. It's, you can't even in the bidding war is like an hour long, and then somebody buys it. You guys have a mortgage on it, right? Say it again, I'm sorry. You have a mortgage on it right now? Yes. Yes. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is kind of a frustrating one for me. Normally, I'm a lot quicker at being decisive. 14 minutes, and I, uh, I still don't have the answer. Um, so a couple different options, and, and maybe I'll start throwing them out there, and you tell me, hey, if this is something that sounds remotely enticing. Um, one of the ways that we can potentially give you more money is by buying the property 
um, subject to the existing mortgage. So what that would be is we take over the mortgage that you currently have in place and we give you cash for the difference. You take over the mortgage. Okay, got it. Um, so that's one way that an investor can essentially pay more for the property because we're not having to come in and pay for our loan and, and things like that, right? So it's kind of leveraging the, the mortgage they have in place. Now, that being said, uh, the next question I'd have is, is when you move, are you going to want to be buying a new property? Not right away. Okay, so that makes it easier for us to do sub two. Uh -huh. uh, because then you're not, it doesn't necessarily matter that you have uh, that, that mortgage still in place. Um, the other option is a, a cash offer. Um, the, the reality of the cash offer is, is that you're not going to get as much as you would get um, listing on the open market. Um, now we'll say, um, that might be a better solution because we do real estate all across the country. So I understand how people are about certain things. If this is a house in Texas, um, you could literally call up one of the thousands of foundation companies and say, Hey, come, come look at my foundation. Tell me what's wrong with it. And they'd probably fix it for, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, yeah. whereas up North and other places, um foundation companies are few and far between it's not as common and it's a lot scarier to buyers so that's where if that is really i mean the house like you said you've improved the house but there still are some things cosmetically that can be updated um and then on top of that the foundation so it's like i'm looking at the the zillow for your property right now it says 219 Okay. Um, and then when I have comps pulled up, uh, just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at here, mm -hmm. not, these are just some more square foot house, not lot size, right? Okay. Okay. So I've got 190, 237, 229, 187, 224, 225. 185, 203. So this is like, and then you've got obviously that one for 355 with the right. large amount of land. Um, so they're kind of all over the place. Um, and, yeah, it's like ranging from 187 to 237. I think is what you said. Right. And, okay. and also keep in mind, I don't know what the city of or the town of Eden looks like, but they're all in kind of a cluster in what appears to be what is considered downtown Eden. Like, okay, or yeah. Yeah. And we're not, we're not right over there. Like we're like where we live is rural. I mean, there's like, we can see the neighbor, but not really, not really. Yeah. Right. Your trees yeah, kind of yeah. block it. Right. It's more private, yeah. So, um, and, and like to give you an idea, there's a property that's more further out there on Sand Rock Road okay. that that sold for two sixty five last October, and it okay. was nineteen hundred square feet. Oh, how was it? Was the land uh, fifty six thousand? So, like half of your land. Okay. Okay. Wow. So this is where like I start like I get concerned about what value to put here because um, all my everything that I do is is just a mathematical equation and it all starts with what could the house be worth when it's completely fixed up right um, yeah. and and to your point and you said it when we first started talking was, well, Zillow says, you know, 225, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's taken into consideration the condition. And, and well, it's taken into consideration the land because it knows the land, but it doesn't know the condition of the property, right? It just, right. 
that all that Zestimate is is an algorithm. You know, I mean, it's saying here's what properties are selling for here. So, you know, we estimate that that's what your house could be worth. Um, and because, like, I I literally I have a system. It's called Batch Leads that I use. Well, I have multiple systems: so Privy, PropStream, Batch Leads. Those are the systems I use to comp properties. Like, I would assume if I come in here to Batch, they have like their own little algorithm. Uh, we'll see what it gives you. It gives you a value of two fifteen eight five five. Okay. Right. Um, so here's my thing. That is. I think your house can be worth a little bit more fixed up, but not a lot. Um, and so then I start coming back down from there. So, but the question that I have for you is, is one, how motivated are you guys to sell? Is there a specific cash in hand dollar amount that you need? Or is it just like, we want the most that we can possibly get? Um, Wait, so tell me, so tell me the difference. Like, other words like if we had cash in hand literally versus taking over the mortgage and paying the difference like what's the difference well the the difference there is is like if i buy the house cash that's where you you get the lowest amount so we're talking about like if i sit here and i say this is just rough numbers okay if i say the house completely fixed up could be worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and i say i don't know I want to put 35,000 into it. Mm -hmm. You seem, you feel like that seems like a high number. No, I'm, I mean, I think that makes sense. Like that makes sense. So if I say, if, if I say 35,000, so that's me coming in and I'm going to fix the foundation, I'm going to paint the outside. I'm going to probably tear out those cabinets in the kitchen, put new cabinets, put new countertops. Um, say thank you for the bathroom, but I'm going to tear out the wallpaper and all the other stuff, fix the doors, right? New light fixtures, yeah. all that. Then cash offer is going to be like 140. Okay. Okay. Right. And so from that perspective, it's like you, you have some money, but you might be able to get more, um, because I'm assuming you owe somewhere in the range of like 105,000. Does that sound right? I think it's 100. Yeah, 105, 112. I think it's something. Gotcha. So let's just call it 110. So in that case, you walk away with like $30,000. Uh, now, if we say sub two, and in that case, because we already have a long term loan in place, there's an opportunity where we could turn this into instead of it being like a fix and flip, it could be more of like, we're going to hold it for cash flow. Um, do you think there's a, a market out there where people would want to, to live there as a rental unit? Mm, possibly. I mean, I don't really, I think most of these are single family homes, but I mean, we're not near a university or anything like that. So I don't think most of these are single family homes. So I would say that it would be somebody would purchase it. Gotcha. So, on but but there's also opportunities for us to do several different exit strategies there. there you know we could sell a finance there's different things that we could do so um on the sub two route you walk in with thirty thousand on the cash if you said hey i want more money than thirty thousand dollars that's where we could potentially look at doing that the other thing that you could do is potentially well no you need the cash yeah. No, that those those are pretty much the two options. So it's like, and that's if I think I can, if I can build a bridge to saying I could get two fifty if I fix it all the way up, mm -hmm. which is one of the my concerns. It's like I need something that shows me that proof. Prop streams giving me the best um, numbers here. Because the other problem is you got a 1929 build. Um, so we got a couple of other 1920 builds. I 
I mean, I think with the land we can make we can make an argument for being pretty close to two fifty. So, okay. so if we do that, that gets us. I mean, realistically, once we come out, we do a walkthrough and, and we verify the condition. We figure out why the house is sinking into the center of the earth and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're probably going to end up in the range of somewhere between one twenty-five and one forty. That's where I, I think we would end up landing. Okay. Okay. That would be, and that would be the cash offer. Correct. Okay. And if it's like, hey, that just is not enough, then there's, like I said, there's the opportunity for us to figure out a way to get you more potentially through the sub two route where essentially all that means is, is we're taking over that mortgage. We start making the payments. And then we just literally give you cash to walk away. Cash to walk away. Okay. So what would be, so basically with the, with the options you just mentioned, you would take over the payments and then you would get the, the remainder that is worth in cash and can walk away. So I'm still confused as to what that has to, how different that is from the, basically with the cash offer, we would pay off the mortgage. Because your mortgage gets paid off. Your mortgage gets paid off. Okay. But in this case, instead of me having to bring $110,000 from my lender, I'm leveraging the fact that you already have that. Now, ideally, like, I know this sounds crazy. I wish you owed more. Um, so I wasn't having to bring, you know, $40,000 $40, cash to you. He, okay, I just asked him. He said he owes, we owe, actually, we're going to make make it worse, but he says we owe like 101. Right. Or 102. So I was a little off on my estimate. But again, same same difference. I mean, it just, I mean, at some point in time, the gap becomes so big that it eliminates the benefit for us to buy it sub two. Where if it's like, hey, I want, sixty thousand dollars cash it's like well well damn i'll just go get my own loan for the full amount you know <laughs> it's uh, it's eliminating the point of me having your your loan there you you follow what i'm saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so th those are kind of the options there I, I don't know if you guys have kind of talked about what you thought or, or what you were thinking but that's from a from an investor standpoint, like that's how we look at deals and that's what we're looking at. And so mm -hmm. if we come in and we say, like in this case, we can sell it for 250 and and we do 35,000 repairs and we pay you 140 to give you an idea of what that looks like and how quickly kind of across the board, the money evaporates. We have a we have a profit profit calculator here that we run. Um, and then what am I? I said one forty. That puts us at about forty thousand dollars profit, which puts us at about a sixteen percent profit percentage. Uh, which I mean, is like, it's not bad, but that's like, if everything goes perfect, right? 35,000 in repairs and it closes at 250 and we don't have anything else. So, um, real quickly that can start evaporating, getting us further down. Now, yeah. what is the reason why, let me think about this. There's a, cause you to move, if you're going to go rent, um, you don't need a ton of cash to, to make the move immediately, right? Right. So there is a, right. another option. Um, but the foundation would probably have to get fixed. So what we would do there is um and this would probably net you the most amount of money so i should have thought about this earlier um but my buddy oscar just reminded me of it 
Um, he's sitting over here looking at me going, yo, bro, hey, what about Novation? Uh, so Novation is where essentially we – you sound cool, so I use the term. Um, we kind of partner up on it. So what we could do there is, is we say, hey, let us come in, and we know that we need to do – the foundation. So we fix up the foundation and then we list it on the open market with a realtor and we sell it. And then, so to give you an idea, if we, let's do a math on how this can net you more money. So say we do the foundation and we sell it for 200,000 mm -hmm. and then we pay a realtor 7%, that's 14,000 in closing costs and commissions. So that leaves us 186 and then we owe 102 to the bank. Right. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us $84,000 and, and potential profit. Let's say it took us, I don't know, $10,000 to fix the foundation. So it leaves us $74,000. Um, and we say, you know, Hey, we, we want our 10 K back for the foundation. And then we take 30K, um, that would leave you 44,000. So again, okay. no matter, <laughs> it's funny how math works like that. No matter what we do, yeah. we're, we're ending up somewhere in the range of you ending up roughly with $40,000. $40,000. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, obviously I have to, have this conversation with the person who right. the mortgage. So, um, but I, I think that answers all my questions. You gave me a lot of information. Um, so basically, when do you, when do we get paid? Is it after the house is flipped? So, in the cash way, you get paid the fastest. You get paid okay. like in inside of June. Okay. Sub two, which now I'm leaning to is is potentially the worst way for me. Um, yeah. Inside of June. Novation, which is where you'll probably end up getting the most amount of money, is when the house sells. I see. Okay. That makes sense. When the house sells. Okay. I mean, obviously, that makes sense. All right. House. Okay. And that would be after the foundation was fixed. And, and Correct. All that too, so. And preferably okay. after, well, Preferably after you guys move out, but if you didn't want to move out, you could stay there as long as you're completely okay with showings. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah, I did that with my laptop. I still live there. Right. Showings. It is what it is. And we, I mean, we staged it really nice too. And just, uh, honestly, fun. we like it when people stay there because then we're not worried about people breaking in and damaging the property and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a cool little process. If you do stay there, it kind of helps us out a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else I should know? Because I'm going to talk to him this evening. Um, realistically, the only thing that you need to realize is, is I kind of just gave you a PhD in creative finance for real estate investing. And I charge a lot of money to teach people that. So... <laughs> I've already emailed you an invoice. I know you didn't know it, but I expect that to get paid later today. What's that? No, I'm just playing. I'm just joking <laughs> with you. Listen, I'm not going to start flipping houses. <laughs> no, I, I, you were actually fun to listen to because you followed along. And I, I don't know if you followed anything I said, but at least you acted like you did. did. So it was like, all right. Okay, this like, is, what? Yeah, I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. I mean, either you're really good at faking it or, uh, you know, you're falling along. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right. Well, I will let you go. I'm going to talk to him tonight. And then how do I get back in touch with you? Is it the number you called from? Yeah. So this is my office phone. So it rings and the entire office is here. If someone else answers, my name's RJ, RJ Bates. Got that. So you can, you can call me back. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome, Heather. Talk to you later. Have a good night. Bye-bye.